When the young men woke up after 300 years in the cave, if you've been sleeping for 300 years and you wake up, the first thing you feel is hungry. So they sent someone to buy some food. And they gave him instructions. Go search for that food which is purest. Meaning that you are living in a world in which food is, in, is con constantly corrupted and contaminated. Because food is increasingly corrupted. You're eating and you ain't know it has some pork in it. Because they've concealed it very carefully. And once the pork go inside there, the angel ain't going to come to you. And so we produce our own food. And we consume what we produce. So we come back to that in a moment, inshallah. The cottage industries. An effort would be made to encourage beyond the agricultural base of the village. The agricultural base of the village is the base of the economy. But beyond that agricultural base, the village would encourage cottage industries. And so it would, it will result in a diversified village economy. Particularly for those who are now working on minimum wage. Because if you're working on minimum wage, the chances are you're going to remain there forever and ever. But if you can get out of wage labor and produce your own goods in your cottage industries and sell, then Allah is the one who provides risk and you can get out of minimum wage. The religious structure of the village. All Muslim residents in the village would constitute one Jamaat. All members of all people resident in the village, all Muslims resident in the village would constitute one Jamaat. That Jamaat would have one Amir. All members of the Jamaat would have, a give, would have to give a pledge to obey the Amir so that we can have discipline in this, in this village. Any villager who is unwilling to obey the Amir, despite our efforts to convince him to do so, would have to leave the village. And so the lawyers are going to have to work out a legal system that would make it possible for us to remove him from the village. The Amir, in turn, would have an obligation to establish Islam in the Jamaat. It is not sufficient for us to be preaching, 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 preaching Islam. Lecture after lecture after lecture after lecture. Man, we tired here in you, man. Why don't you establish this thing? You're talking, talking, talking. Why don't you establish it? And so the Emir will have an obligation to establish Islam in the village. When you establish Islam, then your da'wah now has a second part. You can say, come brother, come sister, come see Islam. Come and see Islam. It will be a living force and the truth will attract people to it. You don't have to do it. The truth itself will attract the hearts of people. What about disputes in the village? Hmm? Disputes which are now solved with cutlass. <laughs> the village of old in Trinidad. The village of old regulated its disputes through a village panchayat. Isn't it? So why do you want to come to attack us now if we want to bring back the panchayat? It's only Lloyd Bess who could do it and we can't do it. This is a village court. And it works only to the extent that villagers respect it and villagers are willing to submit to its decisions. Our panchayat will be headed by the, in Trinidad they call it Kazi. The correct pronunciation is Kadi. 
And uh, Haji Ruknuddin Rahimahullah was Kazi, wasn't he? That is the village judge. So the village panchayat would be headed by a village Kazi or Qadi who would decide all disputes in accordance with the Sharia. Our goal in establishing the panchayat in establishing the economic system of the village, in establishing the political structure of the village, our goal is to so establish justice in the village that we eventually succeed in achieving a virtually crime-free village which would be the envy of the rest of the country. In addition to this brief description of the layout, the structure, the functions of the village, let us go on to speak in a little bit more detail about the benefits of establishing Muslim villages. Anybody in you know who was kidnapped recently? Hmm? Who was murdered? The lady come home with her car and as she get out of the car to open the gate the fellows came and killed her. I don't know who he did it. Or they went and they pick up the child playing, kidnap the child who won ten million dollars now. It's happening more and more. And nobody seems to be able to stop it. We're living in a world which is becoming unbelievably dangerous. It's becoming, growing more and more dangerous. Murder, random killing, gang warfare, kidnapping, including the kidnapping of children, rape, robbery, all of these things are becoming commonplace that we didn't have when we were children growing up. Now that we have understood the world from the Quran, we know it's going to get worse tomorrow. We have a duty to protect ourselves and our families. Well, how do the rich solve the problem? The rich solve the problem by moving to gated communities, gated enclaves, walls around and gates, where only the rich can live. They employ heavily armed security guards with guard dogs and sirens and security alarms and this and that and the other. And so the rich ensure their own security. But in the process, they literally throw the poor to the dogs. That's happening all over the world today. Such a solution, we argue, it demeans and it antagonizes the poor and it earns their hatred. Can we build a village where the rich and the poor will live side by side? Can we build a village which would take charge of its own security without having to employ <laughs> security guards. A village where the rich and the poor would both engage simultaneously in establishing community organized collective security for the village. So you're not going to sleep on your bed every night. No. No matter who you are. Rich or poor. A few nights of the week you're going to be out there patrolling. It doesn't matter who you are, rich or poor. We believe that Islam can bring the rich and the poor together to live in such a fraternity. We believe that Islam can put a rich man to function alongside a poor man in watchmanning and patrolling. If our experiment succeeds, then 
Insha'Allah, residents can sleep with their windows open. There will be no need for iron bars and burglar proofing when you build your houses. So your houses won't look like prisons. 